There's one. Yeah, come up out of there. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> What's going on, guys? This is Gene Jensen, and today we're going to talk about fishing or punching with a Tokyo rig. Little bitty bass, but it show his fun. <laughs> All right, so let's sit down and talk a little bit about the Tokyo rig or the punch shot rig or the Jika rig or <laughs> there's so many different names for these. These are fairly similar, but I'm gonna talk about the differences between the two. But first of all, what I've got here is I've got a Tokyo rig. And um, what a Tokyo rig is, is basically, let me go ahead and take the worm off so you guys, or the worm off the hook so you guys can see this. Okay, so it's a, swivel a welded split ring or a welded ring and a dropper a very stiff dropper with two tungsten weights on it is how i got it rigged up and a fairly thick extra wide gap hook all right so that is a tokyo rig all right so this is also a tokyo rig with what i've done here is i've well i've molded a uh, a, a cylindrical weight around it just like that still the same dropper dropper is on a i think this is a swivel yeah it's on a swivel it doesn't have to be but welded ring swivel right here that you tie your line onto and a small hook but it's still kind of a stiff wire ewg now a a punch shot rig um is what instead of having a drop line you have your hook or your sinker um, connected directly to the ring. And what I would typically use is something like a drop shot. I'd open up this little uh, this little swivel right here and open that up a little bit and I'd put that on the on the split ring. You can make these yourself. Um, there's plenty of things out there to make them. Jan's Netcraft uh, carries some uh, some uh, spinnerbait wire. Uh, you can cut up and all kinds of stuff. And and making them is fun. But uh, the one thing I figured out is keep the the if you're going to make a Tokyo rig, keep the drop leader between you know, one to four inches, maybe five. I wouldn't go any longer than that. I've tried them as long as nine, and it was just cumbersome. It wasn't even worth it. So. You know, one to five inches would be just fine if you wanted to make them. But the key is do not connect the sinker to the hook, whether you're fishing the Tokyo rig or the, the punch shot rig, or what do they call it, the Jika rig. Um, do not co uh, connect it to the hook. What that does is it'll cause your hook to roll and you'll have a natural action to your bait. It just won't sit right. So that's one of the key things about that. So just make sure that you don't connect it. But uh, have a good heavy duty split ring or a swivel and uh, man, just go out and fish it. Let's talk a little bit about more about the equipment that you're gonna fish it with. All right, so I fish both of these rigs on a J rod, either a medium heavy or maybe a heavy, but I try to stay away from heavy. I, try, I, I use a seven foot six or this is a seven foot five um, medium heavy rod and I use fluorocarbon line. I don't like to use, if I'm gonna use braid, I'm gonna have a fluorocarbon leader. You gotta have a shock absorber unless you're making these with some super stout hooks and super stout swivels and your equipment and your gear is just heavy, heavy duty. I wouldn't use straight braid and I wouldn't use a heavy action rod because you will break something. Something's gonna fall apart. This swivel right here, the one that comes with the VMC ones, um, and I, I'm gonna leave a link down in the description of all the all the different tackle and stuff that I use in this. But um, anyway, so here, you, you just that little swivel right there is not gonna hold up to a massive hook set when you're punching. You can get a fish out of the out of the matted stuff with 20 pound fluorocarbon. Um, or 25 pound fluorocarbon pretty easy and you've got enough flex in that medium heavy medium heavy rod to be able to uh, to prevent you from breaking anything high speed reel eight one to one gear ratio um maybe a seven three but as high speed as you possibly can get just because when you're punching you just want to be able to cover as much water as you can get it back in as fast as you can stuff like that so um but yeah that's basically the equipment 
I, um, the only time I would uh, deviate from that is if I downsized, if I went to like a really light hook and I'm just finesse, I've never done it, but anyway, <laughs> finesse uh, Tokyo rigging or whatever you want to call it. But all right. All right. So I'm talking about punching with this thing and why is a Tokyo rig or a, a punch shot rig better than a regular punch rig? And I'm going to leave a link to the, to the, to the video about how to, how to fish a punch rig. But um, why is it better? Well, hold on. Let me get a... I know I've got one somewhere. This is kind of a light punch rig. I don't have a heavy, heavy hook on it. But I want you to look at this real quick. Okay, so typically if I'm punching thick cover, I've got a, a sinker that is twice the size of this. So an ounce to ounce and a quarter, ounce and a half, maybe even two ounces. Big old heavy, heavy, thick hook. And I'm just... I'm, I'm punching it into cover and it's, and it's going down. Well, the problem is is on the hook set. Even the best punchers, the best thick, heavy cover fishermen, they're gonna, you, you, you feel the bite, you set the hook up, you feel the fish, you feel the fish, feel the fish, and all of a sudden, pook, your bait comes out. What has happened is you get that big old weight up in front and it goes into the fish's mouth and the first thing it does is it is you set the hook okay so it's in the in in its mouth you set the hook it straightens everything out and then this gets the the sinker gets into the inside of the fish's mouth and, and the minute he lets off just a little bit of tension that sinker blows the fish's mouth open and the hook never penetrates and it happens a lot well this is what I love about the Tokyo rig. Your sinker is nowhere near your hook. And so that fish bites and it's got this. And even if he gets, gets the sinker in its mouth, it's all going to collapse right here. So it's gonna, all going to collapse right there and you've got a good positive hook set. You're going to hook more fish on a Tokyo rig punching than you will on a punch rig. And so um, that's the huge advantage. The other advantage is when that, this thing goes in and it goes down and, it's, and it hits on the bottom and you've got a little bit of silt, even if you have a, have a little bit of silt, this sinker will go flop down in that silt and half of your bait has disappeared down in the silt and it just makes it more difficult for a fish that's on the bottom to get to your bait. Thicker the silt or even the gunk that falls off if you're punching mats you get all that gunk that falls off and it gets down in the bottom and nine times out of ten it hits the bottom and you're not going to get bit. Well with the Tokyo rig when it does it it sits and your bait sits right there just horizontal so you have more of a natural a natural look, a natural action. It looks like a bait fish that's sitting just above the the, the silt. And depending on the thickness of the silt, is I'll, I'll play around with the, the length of my leader. But I really haven't seen much of an issue with it. But the biggest thing is, is it, it falls down, the sinker hits, and your bait lays on top of the silt. And it looks more natural. Now, another thing that you'll notice is that it slides through the cover ease, much more easily. Um, and... It's kind of hard to explain, but what it does is it, it'll pull this, it'll, the sinker will go down through the grass and then literally it'll just pull your bait, and I'm gonna try not to hook myself, pull your bait down through the grass and it just, it, it slides through easier. You can get away with fishing slightly lighter uh, sinkers and things like that, but those are the advantages. Now, all right, so what baits would I use? I'm, I'm gonna use my, my typical punch baits. Uh, this is a Z-Crawl from Z-Man. I'm a Rage Bug. Um, uh, the new Intimidator from 13 um, is going to be a great punch bait. It's going to be mainly creature baits, but I really think that if there's a lot of bait in the in the grass and you're and you're punching like little mats of grass and there's and there's shad feeding around those mats i think you could throw a fluke on here and be just fine punch it right through and uh and the one thing i love about this bait is it can go it can it, it doesn't get hung up it doesn't get hung up in trees it doesn't get hung up in grass it doesn't get hung up in anything except for rock because a lot of times we'll get that sinker they'll slide down into the rocks but I still would fish it around rocks just gives you more natural presentation but uh, I really think a fluke would work good in, in in scattered grass and stuff like that I might try that today all right so a lot of people will argue the, the point where it's just a short drop shot it is but it but it isn't um, 
a, the, the dropper, the leader, the drop leader on this rig is stiff. It's rigid. I mean, if I was to, to rig it anywhere like a short drop shot, it would be 25 pound fluorocarbon, as stiff and thick of a line as I could get. But the fact that this is, this is stiff, it's rigid, it's going to sit on the bottom and it's going to hold your bait up better. It's not going to collapse. And a lot of times once it sits down on the bottom, and you have a uh, and, and you have a, a a slack or a limp leader. I got bait fish popping right behind me. You know, and if I was to use just regular fishing line as a as a leader, it would just collapse on itself, and that would be a um, it'd be an issue. It'd just kind of fall down. It wouldn't look natural. You wouldn't get that nice horizontal presentation. So I really think that a stiff um, rigid leader is uh, is critical with this. Now, with with weight size, you can you can use you know I use two of them just so if I'm punching, uh, this part goes punches in, it comes into the cover easy and it comes out of the cover easy. If I was only to use one, I'd have all these these edges and right here right here to to mess with. I bet a kind of a longer cylindrical egg sinker would work pretty good uh, as well. But the biggest thing is is uh, use the heaviest weight or use the lightest weight you can get away with but make sure it's heavy enough to be able to punch through the cover easily this fall when all of these you can't see the mats because of the fog but when all of these mats uh, really mat out and get super thick uh, that's what I'll be using I'll be using an ounce and a half um, tungsten weight and I'll just be you know as, as as much as I can punching it through that thick cover and if that isn't enough I'll go up to a two ounce all right, so let's get up, let's fish it, talk about how I'm going to cast it, and uh, all the little things that I have figured out over the months about this crazy rig. Who'd have thought it caught so many good big fish? <laughs> crazy. All right. For those of you who've never seen this before, <laughs> this is how you, you rig it. Like I said, I got a Z crawl on here. It's a fun little bait to fish. If you're wondering how to put a hook in a worm, oh, I've got a whole couple of really good videos about how to do that. Anyway, that's how it's going to look when it sits on the bottom. <clears throat> I may have to up my weight size if I go and eat, go and hit this thick stuff, but I think I'll be okay. I'm kind of punching right now, but I'm, I'm flipping into submerged grass. And when I say submerged, it's three or four inches under the surface, and then it's six feet deep. So it's really thick grass, and I'm, I'm pitching into holes and that kind of stuff. But I'm, it's, this is going to be the same thing with punching. You, you pitch in, you let it hit the bottom, and you sit there and you shake it. That's one of the differences with the, with the, uh, between a punch rig and this one, is because that bait's not buried in the silt, I can sit there and shake my rod. A little bit more and get bit when if they're down there. Let me see if I can stop my boat from drifting and then bring it back up. And as you get to the top of that mat, is you there's always what I call the roof. Tick the roof. Just pull it up to the bottom base of that the the ceiling and shake it. So kind of raise the roof, you know that kind of crap. But. Uh, the biggest thing is, is this is not a long cast technique. This is a short cast technique. You don't want to, I don't think making a long cast and dragging it back to you, I think, you'd, I don't think it would be super productive. I'm sure it would work, but I think, especially with punching, you want to keep your bait real close to you. And somehow, I got oil or something, probably from those worms on my hand. But let it sink down to the bottom, shake it a little bit. Shake it, bring it up to the top, shake it, and then bring it in and make another cast. And you do this thousands and thousands and thousands of times. So right here, this is optimum situation with this submerged grass. I'm not typically punching, that's why I have light weights on here. But as this mat gets really, really thick, and as it's, it's hard to punch down through, what happens is everything up underneath that mat dies. And the only thing that's alive is what's on top. It's kind of like an old growth forest where you see all these big giant trees, but there's not hardly any, anything underneath. And so it's, it's like avenues and places for bass to hide and bait fish to hide. And so um, when that happens, punching through is ginormous. Uh, that's a dumb word. <laughs> but punching through is, is so important, being able to get underneath there, let it get down to the bottom, shake it a little bit, bring it back up to the top. But uh, 
it's one of my favorite ways to fish it's like full combat and it really really is awesome hey how you doing back there so I'm gonna pitch around a little bit see if I can't catch a fish in this mess but same thing applies whether you're throwing pitching into into submerged grass like this or you're pitching into mats it's all a vertical presentation let it hit the bottom shake it a little bit bring it up to the top if you start dragging it it just it's going to get caught up in the grass and it's just going to be messy nasty and i don't think it'll work as well as if you just pitch it in so anyway i'm gonna stop rambling now when you are punching one of the especially if you're punching these thick mats and i can barely hear them the, the, you, you start hearing what sounds like popping just little popping noises little ticks coming off the top of the grass and what that is it's the bluegill feeding underneath the grass and when you when you hear that you're in what we what i call a live mat it's got a lot of life in it and uh and so when you hear that stop and fish and see if there's bass underneath there and what i always say is there can be bait fish with no bass but there will never be bass with no bait fish so if you find the bait fish fish it you know bluegill shad right now what what's going on is we've got schools of shad swimming around in this grass and that's why i'm fishing the submerged grass and not the mats but uh i may have to pull out just a little bit to catch one but anyway this can be a dynamite way to to, to fish mats it, it really is a little bit better than a regular punch rig and if you just remember that you don't want to break your equipment using heavy heavy punch you know the typical punch rod and punch uh, the line you would use to punch with you know 65 pound braid ultra heavy rod nice and long and everything else you want a little bit of flex so you don't break your equipment you can still get a fish out of it you just may have to work a little bit harder you may have to go get the fish but uh you're not going to lose them that's for sure so All right, so let me answer the question, what's the best time of the day to fish matted vegetation? It's after the sun comes out. Um, really, when that sun comes out, it pushes those fish deeper and deeper in those mats. And the, in, this, in this, these conditions where it's foggy or low light conditions, they're liable to be on the outside edge of a, of a, of a mat that's got a steep drop. I don't have any of those around here. I would, I'd have to go all the way to the other side and it, um, on the river channel. And as uh, foggy as it is, I don't want to do that because there's boats running up and down that edge and I don't want to get run into. But, um, but typically, you wait till the sun comes out and it pushes those fish up underneath that mat and you can fish it all afternoon. And, uh, and another key thing is as you're fishing these mats, they can be huge. This mat that I'm fishing that's right here is about four miles long. And uh, the bass are only going to be in a small little section or several small little sections so you fish until you get bit and then you anchor down you stop right there and you fish that whole area as uh, as thorough as you can and uh, like right here I've got it's a lot of let me turn around and show you guys I don't know if you can see it but I'm gonna try so this is what I'm fishing. I've got a lot of this grass. It's kind of laid over, but there's a ton of it. And there's little holes here and there, and there's fish in them. And it's just gonna, it's, it's gonna take, you know, 40 casts in this one little area to cover the whole thing, to, to find exactly where that fish is hanging. If there's one fish, if there's four or five fish, I'm gonna literally pick it apart foot by foot. If I know there's a lot of fish here and, uh, and really, really cover it thorough to, to, to catch the most fish out of it. So just kind of tough. It's one of those tedious type deals, but man, once you get into them and you stop and you fish like I'm doing right now, you can catch seven, eight, nine fish out of one little area. I've done it before and I've done it a lot of times. All right. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell so you get notifications when I launch new videos. Um, and uh, I'm excited to be bringing you guys more instructional videos. The more and more I can do, the better. I've got my schedule, my wife's schedule, and everything else set up squared away to where I can do this. And uh, 
man oh man i'm excited to be back at it but uh like i always say be sure to introduce somebody to fishing introduce them to my channel let me help you teach them how to fish more importantly get out of the water go ahead and catch some fish and have a great day we'll see you